Trees talk to each other. They communicate. They share resources. They share information. You know, trees are not individuals. They're connected together. And this makes the forest a whole connected place. There are solutions to these problems. <laughs> um, we need to be ingenious and adaptive. These forests are resilient, that there are systems meant to heal. They're meant to evolve and adapt. We have the ability to work with our forests to save our forests for the future. So I started out as a forest scientist trying to understand uh, how to grow trees. I felt that we were dis disconnecting the forest into you know, its little parts and ignoring these other essential processes that are important to forest dynamics. Um, I published this work in Nature in 1997 and Nature dubbed the experiment the Wood Wide Web. And the Wood Wide Web is really just this network of fungi that links trees together and provides avenues for them to share resources. These trees can send messages back and forth to each other through these fungal networks. So it really does behave a lot like, and is, and is patterned a lot like, like the internet. The soil is packed full of mycelium. Every pore, every soil crumb is covered with mycelium. And the mushrooms that emerged from that mycelium, that's what you see in the forest. Um, and it really is just the tip of the iceberg. And under a single footstep, there can be literally hundreds of kilometers of mycelium. The fungus grows these threads from the root tips. And these threads run through the soil, picking up nutrients and delivering it back to the plant. But they also run through the soil and eventually can connect with other trees. That forms the mycorrhizal network. So I had a graduate student, Kevin Byler. Um, Kevin spent his doctoral thesis mapping what these networks look like in forests. Pretty much every tree was connected to every other tree. The centers or the hubs of this network were the big old trees. Um, they were the most highly connected. And ultimately, we went on to discover that these networks were important in the regeneration of these young trees coming up underneath these old trees. The old trees transmit carbon, water, nutrients to these seedlings, and especially their kin, it turns out. And so this all, you know, came together to help us understand that these, these old trees really were like the nur nurturing nuclei of the forest. That, that's why we started to call them mother trees. Mother trees are a crucial keystone in regeneration of forests. They're also homes to animals and lichens and mosses and, you know, all kinds of creatures live on them and in them. Um, so they're, they're basically scaffolds for biodiversity. They also store a ton of carbon. So, you know, in the climate change era, these old trees really are important carbon pools. Our forests are under increasing stress from changing climatic conditions. And this puts trees and regenerating trees under enormous stress. The drier it becomes, the more harsh it becomes, uh, the more important these networks are to that resilience of the forest. If we keep going the way we're going, if we keep taking out these old trees, if we keep clear cutting them, you can think of it like rivets in an airplane. You can take out one or two rivets and the plane will still fly. But if you take out more and more rivets, and if you take out that key one that's actually holding on the wings or the prop, um, then the system will collapse. We don't want to get to that point. So I developed this project called the Mother Tree Project to try and take the ideas of of connection and collaboration, as I, as I mentioned, to bring it to forestry practices. The objective of, the, of this project is how do we create or how do we foster forests or help manage forests so that they are continue to be resilient as climate changes. My name is Simhayetsk. 
I'm Sim Xian from the Gitlan tribe, the House of Spihanax, Ganhada clan. One of the really interesting things about the Mother Tree Project is we get to demonstrate the connections of these mother trees below ground with each other and forming communities. And this is something that we have known in our Aboriginal science for thousands of years. It's advised my research, it's changed the way I look at things, the way I interpret things. And so this has led me to work more and more with Indigenous people. And what we found is actually quite brilliant. For one, we found that natural regeneration under these trees has increased manifold when we have old trees. It makes sense. They provide seed, they provide protection, and the more mother trees we leave and the more we leave them in, in groups, right, in clusters where they protect each other, the better the regeneration it is. And also the more diverse it is. Um, the more diverse the forest, the more it's able to actually take up carbon and store it in stable pools. And, and also of importance is that when we migrate seedlings from warmer climates, survival is increased by 20 to 30% when they're protected by these old trees. This is really good news. This means that we have a lot of agency as human beings in helping these forests to keep up with the velocity of climate change, regenerate and be pre-adapted to changing conditions in the future. And so the forest is stronger when these trees are allowed to have those connections with each other. When the roots are all connected below ground, it's, it's like our communities. When we're all connected, it keeps us stronger. This is what I've been trying to put together in my own mind, in my own Western scientific training um, in trying to understand what we're doing, why we're disconnecting. It is about connection. Our lives are enriched by our relationships. It's the same with trees and plants and soils. And this gives me great hope that we have the ability to save ourselves from environmental collapse.